So this week's assignment is based off of sex and gender. Um, and the first question is why the gender pay gap still exists. The bottom line with the gender pay gap is that women face obstacles in their careers every day. And according to Forbes or the OECD paper, they refer to glass ceilings and sticky floors. Gas ceilings is meaning women is obstacles that are in the way of women advancing in their careers. Um, a woman may not choose to apply for a promotion knowing that she needs to work part-time for caregiving purposes or responsibilities. Um, the sticky floors are disadvantages women constantly face whether they are starting their careers or getting ready to retire. In this instance, most boss, some bosses, not most, let me rephrase that, some bosses um, assume that women are less competent or qualified in a position and they des and decides to offer a lower salary when making the job offer, meaning the woman has to prove themselves just but if you have a man who has the same experience, um, they may see him as more valuable, more reliable, um, knowing that that knowing that the assumptions there that the woman is always the caregiver. And I think that's somewhere where people need to start looking a little bit differently at that. Um, the OECD, according to Forbes, also says that 60% of gender pay is the result of glass ceilings, whereas 40% is the result of sticky floor um, situations. Regardless of where they fall into, the issue is often subtle and difficult to directly address. There are three main reasons that the wage discrepancy is still there. Um, women are more apt in looking for part-time, part-time flexible jobs, um, shorter commutes, somewhere close to home or schools where their kids go. Um, and these responsibilities, bottom line, tend to fall more on the mothers. It's very rare to find a father who is the primary caregiver. Um, second is career disruptions. Um, we have, women have difficulty building up their career and their experiences and their years of experience, um, because of motherhood or caregiving or taking responsibilities on for the entire house and therefore less likely to strive for any promotions because of that added. Third Women face conscious and unconscious bias. This is also including false perceptions that women are less efficient than men or women is or women are more likely going to take advantage of parental leave. Because of the biases, employers are sometimes less likely to provide the same career advancing opportunities as a male candidate. There are laws against this discrimination on gender bias, but they're not easily enforced and nor do people really enforce them. There is a couple more reasons why this is still a reason. Um, fourth, women tend to dominate the careers that they're in and they often pay less than the males in the same fields, depending on their career preference. Women are also more likely to take lower paying jobs and in fact, two thirds of low wage jobs in the United States actually go to women versus men. Um, and finally, women tend to have less time and energy to focus on work because they're spending more time doing unpaid work at home and women actually do 30% more than unpaid work than men. Um, I guess it all depends on how you look at it. I will say that I'm very career driven. I'm a mother of four. I'm a wife, daughter, sister. You could go on for days. I am the main caregiver in my house. Um, 
but that has not stopped me from climbing the ladder, sorry, climbing the ladder, um, making a presence, being known, showing my worth, and it hasn't been easy to get there. I mean, there's a lot of hurdles that I've had to go over. I've been, I'm a full-time student on top of it, and I am also the, I also make the most money. So not only am I the main caregiver, but I also make the most money in my household. Um, and I couldn't do it without my husband, my being my partner every single day, helping me, my kids, um, whether that make dinner, clean the house, do dishes, do chores. It's a schedule. And it, it, it is hard that us women have to prove ourselves that we're going to be there, that we're going to be reliable, that we're worth um, worth it. And, and I think eventually that eventually as time goes on, it'll get less and less that way. I mean, more and more women like myself are taking over in corporate jobs. We're climbing the ladder pretty fast and, um, we're getting recognized for what we're capable of doing. Second question is how I see gender inequality. I mean, I think I said it. I mean, I think the gender pace that speaks for itself. You know, women are expected to do more. Girls grow up in their households expected to be the caretakers, to be the main providers, to do the cooking, the cleaning, um, Find someone who will support you. I think that's instilled from us and those values, at least for me. Um, you know, being born in the era that I was um, and being raised by the era that raised me. Um, however, with gender, what needs to be taught is that Male or female, you're capable of doing anything. And inequality means that they're saying a woman can't do a, a certain job the same as a man or vice versa. But in fact, that's not true. Women go out every day. They work construction. They run heavy equipment. Um, they're lawyers. They're doctors. They're executive professionals. Men do the same thing. Um... I, I do believe there is certain things that, you know, women maybe do better than men. Um, men are just stronger physically, um, than most women. So that doesn't mean a woman can't, um, strive, train, and get the strength that she needs to be able to do what she needs to do. Um, and vice versa with men. And I think where we need to stop doing that as parents when we have our kids growing up is putting into their heads that this is what women are supposed to do. This is what boys are supposed to do. And instead, supporting them for what they want to do, what they believe in doing, um, what they want to strive for in their future. So... If a boy says, I want to be a hairstylist when I grow up, then be a hairstylist. Let's get you there. That's what you want to do, then let's do it. Um, if one of my daughters says, I want to run heavy equipment like my dad, well, you know what? Then we're going to do that because you're capable of doing anything. And I think, I think that's where the standards need to change on this and that anybody is capable of doing anything they set their mind to, whether it's gender female, male, whatever you want to call yourself. But bottom line is it starts with the parents and how we raise them and the morals and the values and showing them that they can do anything that they set their mind to. And not only that, but you're not always, you also need to teach your kids. You're not always good at everything. You're not going to be as good at this as your brother or you're not going to be as good as this as your sister. It's 
I may, like, I grew up playing softball, baseball. My little brother didn't. My little brother's not good at it. I am. He's not. Does that make me better than him? No, because he's better at other things. Like, he can go snow skiing. I cannot. He's better at it. Doesn't mean I didn't try or that I didn't want to learn. But I didn't like it. So, therefore, I didn't put effort into it. It's, I just really think, bottom line, that's where we need to start. So, our last question is, how might changes in gender roles and stereotypes affect our lives today, tomorrow, and the future, and why the future may look hopeful? So, when I was doing some research on this, I mean, I have my own opinions, obviously, but... Um, the bottom line is there's always been that gender stereotype in our social. Um, men, men do it better. Men have been the ones that do it. And this comes from a long line of our ancestors and, you know, the people before. Um, they look at women as... competing now with men in our influences and our social roles, our occupational roles, and we have more demands and what's more demanding than the men. And that's because we're trying to get past what our parents and grandparents had to go through, our great grandparents. You know, it's not the uh, leave it to beaver era, as I like to call it. So, anymore. Um, I think that our future, let's scratch that. This is not my thoughts. Um, women suffer discrimination in relationship to any leadership roles because many people believe they are insufficiently agenic to perform effectively as leaders. Again, this is going into where women are constantly having to fight. For leadership, gender makes a difference given a definition of leadership primarily in culturally, culturally masculine terms that disfavor women. For example, let's look at this way. A lot of people may go more towards a man in leadership than a woman, but why? If the woman is the caregiver, the main caregiver of the family, takes care of her kids, disciplines her kids, makes sure that they're getting everything done, what makes you so... Sure, that a woman can't do the same job in a leadership role with a whole team of employees underneath her. And why would that not make her competent to lead a team when she's leading her whole entire family? Vice versa with men. There are some men out there that are the main caregivers and when their children grow up or they're ready to go on, they have to struggle with that as well. So the future, I'm hoping that the future of, the future of this, this, these roles and so putting into theory, um, and squashing the stereotypes, attitudes, and ideologies of sex and gender related to this in the future and may and keeping the lack not thinking the lack of fit in occupational roles, social identity and categorization. And in fact, gender does continue to be the driving force in world politics and economics. And it's evident in the struggles that women of women to attain the political and economic institutions. So as we go into what it's saying is as we go into our future and more and more women become um, that driving force in economics, politics, social networks, um, having, you know, people, women in power or women climbing the ladders and showing, I think that is what's going to change our direction there. 
instilling it and in, again instilling it into our kids that no matter what you want to be um, and how you want to identify as or what you want to do with your career or where you want to go if you want to do something that's not socially acceptable in the past is okay to do because it is socially acceptable and it should be socially acceptable.